We have learned so far about the elements of a poem or elements of the story. One of the elements, one of the elements is a language and style and figures of speech is under the language and style in the story. It's a, it's a uh, literary device. So the question when you read a short story or a poem, the question is what literary, literary devices that the writer used. Now here there are eight common literary devices that are used in a poem or in a short story. Number one is simile. Simile is a comparison between two different things using the word light or S to make the comparison. It's a very common figure of speech that uses the words light and S to compare two things that are not related by definition. So it's characterized by the word like or S. Look at the example, the internet. The internet is like a window to the world. It means you can learn about everything. The second uh, figure of speech is metaphor. Metaphor is the same. It's almost it's similar to simile. It's, it's a comparison between two unlike things, not using the word like or as. You don't see the word like or as in, in metaphor. And, for example, uh, the detective listened to her tales with a wooden face. She was fairly certain that life was a fashion show. It's only a comparison without using the word like. Alliteration is a poetic technique in which the initial consonant sounds of words are repeated in close succession. It means that words that begin with the same sound are placed close together. Words that begin with the same sound are placed close together. Although alliteration often involves repetition of letters, most importantly, it is a repetition of sounds. So alliteration is the repetition of sounds. It's not the repetition of the letter because sometimes uh, letters are pronounced differently. For example, the letter C is pronounced with, with pronounced as K. Now let's look at example here. You have canary. Look at example two. You have canary and kill. Now canary the initial letter is C and kill, the initial letter is K, is K. But because they are pronounced uh, in the same way, so they are alliteration. We go to number four. Number four is hyperbole. Hyperbole is a figurative language technique where exaggeration is used to create strong a fact. It's an exaggerated statement or claims that not meant to be taken literally. Let's look at the example. Charlie gazed hopelessly at the endless pile of bills stretching across the counter. Now, counter is not that big, but the phrase endless pile is an exaggeration. So it's, it's, it's just simply an exaggeration to make the language more interesting to read. And we go to personification. Personification is a figurative language technique when object or an idea is given human characteristic or qualities. So you are given the qualities of human being to inanimate object or we call it we personify them we personify them we make them person 
Example, justice is blind. And at times, death, Justin is not human, Justin, justice, I'm sorry, justice is not human, justice does not have eyes. So you cannot say justice is blind, but because this is a figurative language, it becomes justice is blind, at times, death. And you have onometopia, onometopia is, is a a word's pronunciation imitates its sound. So it comes from the sound. Example here, the ship went bar. I like the word, the things that go bum at night. The bum is the sound that becomes a language. The, look at number two, the best part about music class is that you can bang on the drum. That is bang is also a sound. We go to symbolism. Symbolism is the use of symbols to signify ideas or qualities. It's, 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 it's an image of things that stands for something else. If you, for example, He's, if I say to my son, you are my I, so I means you are the love, you are my life. If I don't have you, I lost, I lose my eyes. So life is meaningless without you. So it's, it's a symbol. Then we go to the last one, repetition. Repetition is not difficult to identify. It, it's, it's, is the rapid is the repetition of word or group of words just merely for effect, you know, to make it more interesting for people to listen to or for people to read. Here the example is nobody or nobody can make it out here alone. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. This, the free at last is repeated three times here. And look at number three, love is a red, red rose. And red, red is repeated twice. So this is called repetition. Now, well, if you look at the eight figures of speech that we discussed today, you might a bit understand when when someone write a story when you read a story you always have questions is this a literary device it's a good practice if you have a questions like that thank you